tweezers, man. Hi, flower friends. It's Nicole from Flower Hill Farm, and today I'm bringing you an update on my Lysianthus and also my Ranunculus. So I started my Ranunculus about two weeks ago, and we're going into week six of our Lysianthus. So let's show you the Lysianthus to start with. Okay, so this is a story all about how my life got flipped, turned upside down. Just kidding. This is a story of two very different situations with my Lysianthus. I have some that are doing absolutely phenomena. Beautiful. This is ABC white and ABC yellow. This is beautiful. I also have discovered that I have fungus gnats. A fly. A fly just came out of the soil. I better not have soil gnats. So here's a little clip of me last night in here looking around and discovering a fungus gnat in the middle of my Lysianthus tray. Right there, I see it. It's crawling. It's crawling. Right there, I see it. You son of a gun. You son of a thrip. Did you see crawl? It's crawling. There it is. <gasps> I'll kill it. So it has been determined that the fungus gnats and their larvae and the little tiny stupid little fungus gnatty things have been crawling. I've been seeing things so microscopically move in my soil and I thought maybe I had fungus gnat issue but I, it wasn't until my Lysianthus started to die. Like they were starting to just shrivel up and die on some of the trays and they all had the exact same situation. They all were in the same kind of trays. They all had the same soil. They all had the same amount of watering. They all had the same care and some were beautiful and some were shriveling up, turning brown and dying. So that leads me to believe that the fungus gnats were an issue and I actually had to buy some sticky paper. I screwed up on this one. This should have been something that I was aiming to prevent instead of take care of now that we have the issue. So I ended up buying these sticky papers. Uh, they're traps for little bugs like this. They come this big, they're huge. You could buy smaller ones. I purchased this size and then I cut them into smaller squares and I spread them out around my trays and I did catch fungus gnats in less than a day. So uh, you can also put these in like a hoop house, a greenhouse or out in the yard, but I don't like to do that because good bugs will also stick to these. So I like to use these inside when I'm having an issue. This package was not very expensive at all. It comes with 20 of these giant things and they're not sticky until you remove uh, the paper from them. They have a paper on the top and a paper on the both sides and it's removable on both sides. There's a little tab for you to pull down. So they're not sticky until you actually reveal the stickiness within. So you could put them here, but I was watching a video recently and Lisa Mason Ziegler actually lays it down in her trays because if you hang them around, you're more likely to hit them, get stuck, hit your elbow. Anyway, so she lays them right in the trays and that's the method that I'm using right now and I am catching some fungus gnats. So yay. And this brings me back to my point of I didn't sow all of my seeds in case there was a problem like this. So I'm gonna take the seeds that I saved just in case I had a problem like this and go ahead and start those seeds. And I'm probably gonna put those right in the 200 plug trays because I won't have as many of them as I did way back six weeks ago when I was starting 21 different varieties. So what died on me? Well, the queen of the night struggling big time. Roseanne Brown does not look so hot, which is devastating to me because that's my favorite one. My dog is whining. Every time I come down here and talk, she thinks that I'm talking to her and she needs attention. So uh, what else isn't doing well? I can tell you what's doing really good. The Roseanne Black Pearl, the Roseanne Green, the Cherry Sorbet is doing really well. The, the Misty Blue is doing okay. Uh, a couple of the Echo, the Echo Apricot lost it. The whole tray is dead. And they even started to get into my eucalyptus. So I have some eucalyptus plants that look fantastic and I have some that are not looking so hot. Okay. So I laid these out last night. That's the hole. That's just the punch hole because you can actually hang these too. Uh, so there, there's the hole. I don't even think you can see. There's a literally a tiny, 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 tiny fungus gnat right there. And there's also one right there that's a little bit bigger that's dirt up on top. So uh, two fungus gnats in less than 12 hours. I got these in the mail yesterday and put them on the trays last night. Uh, so when you see these, 
a couple of them. There are so many more. So I'm glad that I have this now and I'm really hoping that it's not going to become a problem for the rest of my seedlings. So these should definitely be used as a prevention tool, not a reaction. That was a mistake on my part. I just didn't anticipate any fungus gnats because I didn't have a problem at all last year. But it's better to prevent this problem than take care of it because I lost half my lisianthus because of it. So. Okay, so now it's time to pot up the lisianthus. I know a lot of you have been asking me when I was gonna do that and now is the time. Not only because the fungus gnat issue, I want them to get out of the soil that they're in into fresh soil just in case there are any eggs in that soil. And I also want to get them out of the algae that they're currently growing in. It's not a bad algae situation. My humidity down here is very low, but nonetheless, there's still some algae. So I'm going to take them out of the trays and pop them up into the two hundred plug trays and uh, they have a flat underneath them. So I end up using a tweezer to get the first few out and then honestly I just start using my hands. So you want to, these are really uh, ridiculously expensive tweezers but look at the root growth on these lysianthus. You can see the roots are inch and a half. And then I just dump it. Actually, you can, like, they're, they're not very fragile. I mean, if they ship, just plug it in. So I like to keep the extra soil because you're gonna wanna Make sure that the roots are covered. Yay, little babies. Now I will sometimes just set a whole row, like get a whole row out of here and set them down. Wow, look at that root growth, that's amazing. These little babushkas. There's so many. Now, when you first start doing this, you're gonna start babying these things. You're gonna think, oh God, oh God, am I doing, am I hurting them? But really, they're amazing. So I'm gonna do the second row right here. Just literally tuck it in with my fingers. ABC white so I'm gonna be labeling this row and obviously I probably have two or three more rows to go uh, but that's the general idea make sure you do fill in the gaps and that the roots are covered and it might settle a little bit over the next day or so and you might need to put but uh, a little bit of extra dirt on top I have a tray that's fully done I'll show you and this whoops it's really hard to see let me put it down so you can see all of these ones have been uh, transplanted. I did leave some empty holes because I do have the trays that they were um, living in just in case any other seedlings pop up because I have been seeing a couple of, ooh, I'm too close. I have seen a couple of seedlings just now starting to germinate even six weeks later. So I left a couple of holes after each one of these just in case another seedling started to grow. So on this tray, we have the black pearl, we have Roseanne green, and we have magic, super magic green. So yay, these ones are looking great. Uh, let's cross our fingers ooh, and our toes and hope that they're gonna last this long. So I did start to fertilize my lisianthus about a week ago. I did start the first fertilizer and I think that's why the algae growth is starting because of that fish fertilizer. I use Neptune's Harvest, it's a fish and seaweed 
fertilizer. So I did start to fertilize those. I'm, I fertilize every Friday and hopefully those will be able to stay in those 200 plug trays until they're ready to get in the ground. Remember, Lysianthus likes the cold. It could handle cold temperatures. So those are going to go into the ground six to eight weeks before my last frost date, which is mid-May. So they'll go into the ground hopefully by April 1st. Sometimes we have three feet of snow then. We'll just have to see. So while I was watering the other day, I decided to pull down a tray of the ranunculus that I was starting down here in my basement. And I screamed because I saw green growth. It's amazing. So here are my ranunculus labelle. These are only 13, 14 days old. So these were done two weeks ago in a 72 plug tray. These are labelle ranunculus, one of five varieties that I'm starting. And these were the first to sprout, but I have to tell you, the other ones are also showing some growth. So the butterfly ranunculus, I only did 24 of those because those are a little bit more expensive. I, well, I did 50, but I started 24 and I'll start the other 24, 25 now. I present you a tray of dirt. But look, there's a green thing popping up. It's there, I promise. Yeah, so this one obviously doesn't have as quickly uh, growing little, oh, there's another baby right there. All right, let's pull it out because these are not in 72 plug trays. Oh, it's so fresh. Okay, so, the, okay, all right, okay. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh, 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 uh-uh, okay. Mm -hmm. This is the baby sprout. This is two weeks. See all the white growth? And then there's the green coming from the top. So this, I will be transplanting from here into 72 plug trays. I did just put a massive order for more 72 plug trays because I just don't have enough. So they're all growing little sprouts. These were just thrown in here. Oh, wow, 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 wow. This one's huge. So these were not put into 72 plug trays like the other ones were because honestly, I was running out of plug trays. I didn't know if I was gonna be able to get any more. So look at the growth on this one. Let me get it to focus on the plant. Oh, and this has got one, two, three, four, five green shoots growing out the top. So I just put these in the plug tray, uh, put a little bit of soil on the bottom, put them on top, and then covered them. Uh, the It was pre-moistened. So there, there's like a ton of them in here. Some of them have more growth than others. So this is still early yet. I did these, oh wow. That makes me so happy. Okay, putting these babies back in. What I did now with the other tray that I just showed you with all that green growth, I took it out from on top of my shelf and I put it under the lights. And they can actually go into a much colder atmosphere as well. If you have frost cloth, hoop house, greenhouse, whatever, protect them from severe cold, they can actually go in the ground right now. Like my friend Erin said, she's had hers survive down to 10 degrees Fahrenheit. She does have them in a hoop house and she does have them covered underneath that hoop house. So as long as you give them protection, they can go out. I'm not gonna put mine into the ground until mid-March when I can actually start to work the soil. It could be March 1st, it could be March 15th. You never know. Sometimes we get three feet of snow in the middle of March. These are the butterfly corms. If you'll remember, the butterflies were much larger. So I have some green popping up right here. You can actually, can you see it? There's green there, there's green there. I don't want to mess with them too much, but definitely have some germination sprouting happening on the butterflies. So yay. And I just watered these yesterday. So they're, they are nice and moist. They're not wet. Monoculus don't like to be wet, but they have some moisture to them. Moisture, preferred over moist. So now that it's been two weeks since I started my first batch of ranunculus, I'm gonna go ahead and get my bubbler going and start the second batch because I'm succession planting them. That way I'll have a longer bloom time. It's something I do with so many of the things here on the farm. I planted these about a week after I planted the ranunculus, so I do not see any activity yet, but they're tucked into their, I see green, right there. Yep, there's some green growth right there on this. Yay! I hadn't expected that. Woo, there's more here too. Mm -hmm. Good job. Good night. If you guys have any questions about the whole entire process of ranunculus or lisianthus, I have two videos in depth of when I started them from seed. I'll link those up above and put them in the description below, along with all the products that I actually use. Those plug trays, uh, the seed trays, those are just leftover meat trays. So those are not, those were free of charge. They just were leftovers that I was gonna put in the recycling. So that was an update on my Lysianthus, showed you how to pop them up, and an update on my Ranunculus. I'm super excited at the growth on that. I'm trying to convince Brad Pitt 
to let me put a light out in the garage because that's the perfect temperature out there. When we don't have the pellet stove going, it's down to like 33, 35, 38 degrees. Uh, but we do have, excuse me, I'm so sorry I'm yawning. We do have, uh, we do turn the pellet stove on there in the, on the weekends and stuff. We spend a lot of time in the garage and then it heats up to like 70, 80 degrees. So I don't think I wanna put the ronculus out there as much as I wanna put the ronculus out there because I mean, I guess I could, you know, bring them down here back in the basement when we are out there, but that's a lot of moving stuff back and forth. So I'll probably just keep them down here. It stays between 55 and 60 degrees. And then once the temperatures start to warm up a little bit outside into maybe the, the 20s and 30s, I'll start to harden them off and, and bring them outside. So, or maybe I'll just put them out for the cold nights out in the garage. See, it's a lot of moving stuff around and I'm so indecisive that I don't know what to do. So I'll let you know when I make a decision, which probably won't be ever. So you probably will never find out. And that's how it goes. So thanks guys for watching and checking out this update. I hope to see you very soon, bye. So I have small growth on the butterfly ranunculus. I also have some on the amandine, 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 amandine. I don't know how you say it, but it's there. Woo! Is it focusing? No, it's not focusing. Hello, I'm over here. Focus on the plant! You sprouted! I'm so proud! Too good!